Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome back to the channel. So a couple of weeks ago I made a video talking about my switch from Windows to Linux and how the gaming experience is in 2019. Honestly, I, I just made the video because it was something I wanted to talk about and I didn't really expect that much of a response to it. But as it turns out, the Linux community is crazy supportive of new users, which is really cool. And the video got a way bigger response than I anticipated. I planned to do this follow up video anyway, but it also gives me a chance to answer some of the questions that were asked in the last one. So first off, am I still using Linux? And the answer is yes. However, I am still dual booting. I'm actually at the point where right now I'm using Linux for everything except video editing. And that may change soon because I've been looking at swapping out Premiere for DaVinci Resolve. So I'm still using Linux just as much as I was when I first switched a month ago. I have to be honest though, I have no plans to delete my Windows partition just yet. It's no fault of Linux, but some games will only work on Windows. The reason for that is almost always anti-cheat software. And while I'm a big fan of Linux and I have been for many years now, losing out on playing a game I really want to play isn't worth it. I know that's not gonna be the case for everyone. Some people are such ardent fans of Linux or so determined not to support Microsoft in any way, shape or form that they'll only support developers who support Linux. And I totally respect that, but that's not me. If I want to play a game, I'm gonna play it. I'll obviously be much happier if I can play it on Linux and I'll be sure to draw attention to it if I can, but I'm gonna boot back into Windows if there's something I really want to play. It's as simple as that. Luckily, the number of games that aren't playable on Linux is relatively small compared to what it used to be. So let's look at something I didn't get into too deeply last time. What is the performance like in games? And this is something I'd like to answer more thoroughly at a later date, but from some very unscientific testing that I've done, and by that I just mean eyeballing it, it seems like native games like CSGO actually run the same or maybe even slightly better on Linux, while non-native games like Overwatch, Battlebright, and Elder Scrolls Online receive a 10-15% to performance hit by running them through Wine compared to natively on Windows. Obviously, that's going to vary from game to game. Some might be a little better than that. Others might be slightly worse or maybe not run at all. And it's also going to depend on your specific hardware. For the record, I'm using a fourth gen i7 and a GTX 970. I've heard that Team Red has come on leaps and bounds in the last few years in terms of Linux drivers. But unfortunately, I can't tell you firsthand whether you'd get better or worse performance with AMD gear compared to Intel and Nvidia. I've seen some benchmarks for native Linux games and it looks like AMD stacks up against Nvidia. Nvidia in a similar way to what they would on Windows. For non-native games, however, I actually don't know. So one thing I'd really appreciate you guys' help with is with my hardware, can I perform a benchmark on non-native games like I could with Fraps on Windows? I've had a few suggestions, but none of them work with my particular setup or they only show your current frame rate. To clarify, what I'm looking for is something that can output a CSV file or something like that with my min, max and average FPS over, say, five minutes. For OpenGL games, I can use GLX OSD. It's no longer being developed, but it still seems to work in CSGO. But for Vulkan, I've had no such luck finding an equivalent. Anyway, I'm quite pleased to find that my performance hit was only 10 to 15% in non-native games. For some people, any performance hit might be a deal breaker, but at least for me, the performance is still perfectly acceptable in the games that I play. And I do prefer using Linux for everything else, so I'm willing to take the hit. Something that's worth mentioning is that there are a few bugs I've run into that I don't get when I'm playing on Windows. Native games on Linux obviously had no such issues, but in Overwatch I've encountered three problems. One is crouch being bound to right control instead of left. Luckily I found a solution to that. Basically I just set Lutris to run a pre-launch command that swaps my left and right control when I start Overwatch. And that's something that could easily be added to the Lutris script at some point, so you may not have to do that manually in the future. The other two issues are actually a problem with Overwatch itself, but they're bugs that I don't personally encounter on Windows. One is my weapon seemingly locking up if I double click and then hold, like if I'm burst firing. For 90% of heroes it's not really an issue, but it's occasionally a problem on Soldier 76. This bug is apparently reproducible on Windows if you run certain software in the background like Plays TV, whoever uses that, I don't know. Personally, I've never seen this before, but it is a bug with Overwatch, not Linux. It is an issue though, and as far as I can tell, it affects all Linux users. Maybe there's something you can change in Wine to fix it, but there's a chance that the fix may happen.
have to come from Blizzard themselves. For the record, I've tried setting Wine to run in a virtual desktop and I've tried forcing mouse warp override, but neither of them fixed the problem. And the third issue I've run into is my FPS tanking after a few games. Again, this is an Overwatch bug and luckily the fix is really easy. You just turn off reduced buffering in the video settings and then turn it back on again. This can happen on Windows too and I've seen plenty of reports of people seeing this, but just like the double click and hold thing, I personally haven't seen it before on Windows. So the experience in Overwatch definitely isn't perfect, but I can totally live with it. Elder Scrolls Online, at least without add-ons, in my experience, is pretty flawless. I haven't run into a single issue that I wouldn't experience on Windows as well. With add-ons, however, I did run into one problem. I used to run an add-on for the guild traders called Awesome Guild Store. From my totally untrained diagnosis, it seems like one of the libraries that the add-on depends on is maybe trying to pull the system time from Windows or something. Honestly, I don't know the first thing about programming or scripting, so I could be totally off base there. But in any case, it, it just doesn't work. Battlerite, rest in peace, has some stuttering issues. Some people suggested that it could be the shader cache being compiled, but I ran the game for a more extended period of time to rule that out, and unfortunately it seems like that isn't the problem. The game just has some stuttering issues, at least on my setup. Sadly, the game doesn't have very many players anymore, so it probably won't be a concern to many people. How many issues you run into will of course depend on the games you're wanting to play. A lot of games have no issues at all, especially games that have been whitelisted for Proton on Steam. Like I said, I'm going to test all of this more thoroughly at a later date, but from my eyeball test, for the most part, stuff works pretty well. And as I mentioned, pretty much all of these issues disappear if you're playing native games. So here's a question you might be asking, should I switch to Linux? Honestly, it really depends. From a selfish point of view, I would love for more people to switch to Linux because, well, I think if the community hits a critical mass, we could see a tipping point where more developers actually start to prioritize natively supporting Linux and more games supporting Linux would mean more Linux users, which would be great. But on the other hand, you have to look at it from a software first perspective. Are you gonna be able to do everything you need to do on Linux? And if the answer to that is no, is there an alternative that works on Linux that suits your needs? If the answer is still no, then switching full time is probably going to be a no go for you. The things you need to do on your computer should always take priority. Dual booting is always an option, of course. You can quite easily have Windows and a Linux distro installed on your computer at the same time like I do. Of course, that's going to mean reduced disk space for both operating systems, but meh. Most people have gigantic hard drives these days, so you probably won't care. But the other downside to dual booting is having to reboot when you need to use something in the other operating system. Another Another option is running Windows software in Wine or a virtual machine. For some stuff, that's super easy to do and it works flawlessly. For other things, either it might not work or you'll receive a performance hit. Whether that performance hit is worth it really depends on you. You can also do something called GPU pass-through, which lets the guest operating system use your physical GPU. But first of all, you need a particular setup to achieve that. And secondly, setting that up might be technically beyond some users. If, on the other hand, all of your software either works on Linux natively or you're happy to use the alternatives, I really can't recommend Linux enough. There are so many great distros out there that there's something for everyone. My personal recommendation for a first time Linux user is Manjaro. Reason being, it's easy to install. All of your important drivers and software you might need for gaming are ready to go without needing to enable or add extra repositories. And you have access to basically everything Linux has to offer right out of the box. Plus, I'm a little biased because I use Arch, by the way. I just love the Arch wiki, package manager, AUR, and all that good stuff. And Manjaro can make use of pretty much all of it with a much quicker installation process to boot. Of course, feel free to tell me how wrong I am down below. I know there are loads of good distros out there that would be equally good for a first time user. So go ahead and explain why your distro is better. So finally, is Linux gaming ready in 2019? And the answer is, with some caveats, yes. 
If we're talking about native games, honestly, I think Linux might actually be a better operating system for gaming. I truly believe that. It's more lightweight, it's more customizable, and in some cases you even get better performance than on Windows. But software support, while it's much better than it's ever been, continues to be an issue. If the games you want to play aren't playable on Linux, you are still stuck with Windows, I'm afraid. Or if the games you want to play aren't native, but they do work through Wine, but you're barely scraping acceptable frame rates on Windows, Linux might not be for you either because of the aforementioned 10 to 15 percent performance hit. But with all that being said, if we're judging Linux purely based on its capability as an operating system for gaming, it is more than capable and in many ways it far exceeds the competition. And for me personally, with the games I'm playing right now, it more than meets my needs. So I'll be continuing to use Linux for the foreseeable future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more gaming guides, news and discussion. And don't forget to check out the links below to Patreon, Discord and Twitch. Until next time, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.